Oil, not quite there yet. The recent movement is because of the incident with Trump. Let me explain why. The silver is not ready yet, but gold, you see, is slowly making its way up. All right, let's get started. The Forex market has been acting out lately. I get how challenging it is for Forex traders. Check it out, the Euro is approaching a really strong level. After that, we might see a retracement to around 1.15, 1.20 per Euro. See what's happening. There's a strong level up ahead. We touched it today, it really shows how strong that level is. Yesterday, when I dealt with the Euro, I wasn't too happy with it. Why did I like the Euro? Because they tried to buy it back every time. You see, they knock it down, then buy it up. I, I like that pattern. So I went with the Euro. Okay, moving on. NZD, you see, is really tough to trade. Huh? Tricky moments. Both NZD and AUD have been acting weird lately. First, that they got untied from the dollar and are moving on their own. I'm always super worried when an asset starts behaving unpredictably. In the world of stocks, sure, I get it. That's fine. But uh, look, we hit a strong shorting zone and then bounce back. You get that anyone, even on a lower time frame, would just get wiped out here. These moves are insane. No normal deposit can survive this. Just look at what's happening. We've seen these really sharp, erratic movements in some unclear local currency. I'm always terrified of this. So if I don't see a clear picture, I avoid giving it. The Japanese yen started to make a comeback from somewhere yesterday. I didn't go long on the yen yesterday for one simple reason. I avoid giving signals when the asset is boxed in. Let's put it that way. When the asset is closed by a large paranormal bar, I steer clear of it. Lately, the forex market has been very unpredictable and messy. That's why there aren't many forex recommendations. AUD is stuck, you see. Let's move on. The Swiss franc, just out of nowhere. Up, down, up, down. And then a sharp move yesterday, almost 100 points. Well, that's just crazy. Uh, let's see what we have here with the Swiss franc. There's some level nearby. This is why I basically avoid giving recommendations on the Swiss franc. The population of the country is about 10 million people, probably closer to 9 million. And with immigrants, the, it's around 10 million. It's a national currency that uh, can be quite unpredictable. When people say it's a safe haven, well, Consider the volatility, it's around 15%, which is massive. Imagine you put in 10 million and it goes against you. Now you're down one and a half million. Don't forget, all these currencies like the euro and the Swiss franc still correlate with the US dollar. So I try not to get involved with the Swiss franc at all. I recommended GBP today and it looked very promising. After a false breakout, GBP was bought out and even turned around. I really like GBP. Look at the long-term chart. GBP has entered its strongest long zone so far and is heading towards 1.32. It faced significant resistance. I know you'll see a lot of charts. I'll clear them up later. But when Ivan and I started Gerchik & Co. in 2015, I began marking levels. And as you can see, there are many levels. Look how the asset has behaved. See, this is what we have since 2016. One, two, three, four. From 2016 to 2022, we moved from the upper boundary of the channel to the lower one. So for six years, we were stuck between 1.42 and 1.20. And then only when the local lows were broken out, did they push upwards strongly. Now we've entered a strong long zone. A lot of people try to trade these moves. It's very tough since all these movements are traded on Forex. So we're now in a good long zone. Our nearest level is 1.32. So GBP has a chance to go further. Let's check out the euro. You see, this is the nearest level for the euro. Our next stop is here. And then at 1.3, most likely we'll head there. Because if you take a look at this, we simply move from level to level. And as for oil, still nothing. They pulled back. So most likely oil will be having a hard time before the elections, as it usually does. There's always movement in oil before elections. Bitcoin, you see, also had very high volatility. Bitcoin moved intensely. And this movement happened because they were targeting Trump. I'll explain why. Uh, the thing is, Trump has policies that protect cryptocurrency. He doesn't simply believe that this is the cryptocurrency of the future, but rather thinks that this is a vital tool in our current economic system and cannot be removed from it no matter what. When Trump was targeted, his chances remained strong and speculators reacted 
quickly to everything. Trump's chances spiked a lot during the election campaign, for sure. It affected Bitcoin heavily. Uh, you wouldn't believe how fast these speculators react. GGT, shut up, like I mentioned, so we shorted it there. Moving on. Silver isn't ready yet, but gold is slowly climbing. Gold's hit a strong long zone, so pushing it back down will be tough. If gold starts dropping again here, something's off. SNP. Today, SNP was on my long list. Then Trump made some comments about tech companies and they got hit hard. Tech companies like Nvidia and others took a big hit today. This is related to Taiwan. Let's see how things unfold. All right, let's keep going. Let's check out the big names to see if there were any setups. Take a closer look. Let's take a look at Netflix. Netflix. You see, the pattern has gotten broken out of nowhere. Nothing you can do there. NVIDIA. NVIDIA was actually more of a short setup. You see, NVIDIA has started to close down slowly. Let's keep going. What else do we have? Now, Amazon. Amazon also looked like a short. Amazon and NVIDIA both turned the chart around at a key level pretty well. Someone asked about key levels. Let's see if there's a key level. For instance, I'll mark this level as a key level. I'll focus on it and not look too far left. The nearest left is a very strong level for me. Meta got broken down. Now, let me show you how to understand when these stocks start breaking down. And what does breaking down even mean? It means that market players turn the market into a long-term upward movement. Memorize this chart. When you remember it, put a plus sign so I know you've got it. Look, stocks like Amazon, Meta, and Nvidia already started giving signals. Now see why. Spider went to hit new highs. Look carefully, see? Spider went to hit new highs. These assets you see are far away from high. Just watch them. They're all weaker than NASDAQ. Here's NASDAQ. NASDAQ 100 mini futures. The last two days they looked long, but check out Nvidia and Amazon. One, two, three, four, four short days. Nvidia, one, two, three, three short days. Meta, one, two, three, three short days. These assets are already showing weakness compared to NASDAQ. This means someone has already started selling the stocks. It's crucial to notice these signs. Someone started selling the stocks. You need to make sure to keep these things in check. They're becoming weaker than the market. In other words, they are showing clear signs of weakness.